Somebody actually sent me a tweet from Beyond Meat, I think today, and they were, and it was essentially something along the lines of uh, how meat is destroying the environment. I think that's so ignorant. And I think there's totally an agenda behind that because from the way that I saw my own cognition um, uh, improve since I stopped being vegan, I, I feel like it's without sounding like a conspiracy theorist, like it's totally like a part of it is getting people to be less, uh, less like assertive and less, um, like mentally there. I I think it's scary. Um, and it's, it's, it's scary that that message is becoming so prevalent and, and more widely accepted. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome. We've got another guest today, uh, Josie, who I see there, or Josephine. I'm not sure if you go by Josie or Josephine, but well, first of all, welcome and thank you for doing this. Um, I think this will be a, an interesting discussion. Uh, you know, we uh, everybody else has been muted, so they'll be able to type in questions in the chat if you see them, feel like answering them, or I'll try to get to those if possible. But um, so I just got an interesting background. I kind of caught some of your stuff on social media. You go by the ex plant eater, if I'm not mistaken. And I guess your background is you were. Uh, you, you were engaged in veganism for a number of years, I think since you were a teenager and decided yes. to take 14 years that that was enough of that. So give us a little bit about your background story. What got you into veganism at age 13 and, and tell us about that journey, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. So, oh, yes, I became vegan when I was 13. It was after about a six month period of me having anorexia, but by the time that I started to recover about six months later, I happened to come across a PETA tent at a concert that I went to, and they were handing out flyers and showing videos of what happens in slaughterhouses and me not having anything else to compare it to. I took what they told me at face value, and I've always loved animals too, so that was another thing that kind of con- that made it easier for me to become vegan. So that night, I remember I went home and watched Earthlings. And after seeing the clips in slaughterhouses and being like moved emotionally, I had all the information that I needed to want to go vegan. And I became vegan overnight after that. Um, Obviously, because I was 13, I was limited. Like I was still going grocery shopping with my mom. So I remember my diet was a lot of processed vegan foods like faux meats and stuff. And that's so gross to think about now, but it was foods like that, but it was also fruits and vegetables. I remember that that's always, that always was a huge part of my diet back then throughout the following, I would throughout the following like 14 years after that, I altered my diet within the parameters of veganism. Like I tried, I remember raw till four at one point, which is eating cooked food up until 4 p.m. and then raw the rest of the day. I tried like the raw food and like fruitarian diet briefly. But for the most part, my diet was like a half processed foods diet, half like fruits and vegetables. And I found that even when I was vegan, eating higher fat at least satiated me more, but it never left me feeling like completely satisfied. I suffered with cravings throughout the entirety of that 14 years. I suffered with mental and brain fog, but then the worst health issues came along. I would say at about the 10th year of me being vegan, I started to develop blood in my stool. Um, I started to get like urgent diarrhea multiple times a day. I started to get really bad fatigue because of this, because of losing blood unnaturally. And I would get low fevers on a daily basis. So I didn't know what was going on. I really believed at the time that veganism was this like end all be all and it could cure any disease. So I kept telling myself that it would get better. And I started researching my symptoms and I realized, oh, maybe I do have some kind of irritable bowel disorder. And finally, like when the symptoms got bad enough, I went to the doctor with my mom. And again, this was about 10 years into me being vegan. So I was probably about 23 at the time. And initially, when I went to the doctor, they had me go right to the hospital. I, I was that sick already. Um, and when I went into the hospital, they initially diagnosed me with diverticulitis. And I was in the hospital for like three days during that period. So when I got out of the hospital, I again, I was diagnosed with diverticulitis. But when I got out, I attempted to alter my diet a little bit within, again, the parameters of veganism. I thought veganism could cure my 
condition, even though I got it while being vegan. And throughout the following, I would say six months after that, these symptoms got a little better because in the hospital, they gave me fluids and stuff and they gave me other medications. But then by say like September of that year, when I started my next semester at school, they came back, but like tenfold, like way worse than they ever were earlier that year. So by about a month after the symptoms had started by about September, essentially got really sick again with those same symptoms. They were just a lot worse. And I went back to the doctor. They sent me right to the ER. Um, they told me that my potassium was so low that if I had waited another day, I could have died. And I take responsibility for not going to the doctor sooner. But again, my sim like I was having such bad pain after I was eating that I literally couldn't eat a lot of the time. Like I could not eat enough to sustain myself. So I went back to the ER. They admitted me to the hospital. That was where I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. And they gave they started me on prednisone in the hospital. And that like luckily, thank God, started to heal my body because nothing else was going to at the time. And so I took prednisone for about a month after that. They wanted to put me on mesalamine. I was never comfortable with that because I looked up the uh, side effects of mesalamine and they were all the same symptoms of colitis. So again, stubbornly, I decided I'm going to try to fix this on my own through diet, through altering my diet, but staying vegan. So for about the following four years after that, I remember I tried like eating really low fiber. I tried diff different supplements to help with the inflammation. And some of them did help, but nothing ever stopped me from having another flare up. Eventually I would always have another flare up, no matter how minor it was. Those symptoms that I described earlier would come back, um, every month or so, just more in a, you know, in a less serious form. So like, luckily I avoided having to go back to the hospital for the following four years after that, but nothing ever kept my colitis in remission. And by uh, last May, I could see myself going into another flare, like a bad flare, because we had a death in the family. And I could just see myself getting into that point where I thought I would have to go back to the hospital. So I was desperate to get something to work. Um, and that I think was what made me open to considering that maybe veganism wasn't right for me anymore. And then, you know, I went into researching more about nutrition and finding the carnivore diet eventually. Yeah, it's a that's a it's a pretty long journey there. I'm just kind of wondering, you know, along the way, um, you know, people have different sources of information. Where where were you getting like your your advice or your information on how to do a vegan diet correct? Because a lot of people, you know, the critics will say you were never really vegan, you didn't do it right. Um, you know, you were just eating junk food all the time. Where where were you getting your information from? So I had read books like the China study, which I think is a lot of propaganda now, but I read something, I read that, um, I, I followed a lot of vegan doctors. Um, I, I followed mostly a lot of YouTubers, which are obviously not experts, but I saw them living this lifestyle that I admired and eating the way that I did. And they seemed to be fine. Um, but you know, now I look back and I see like, oh, that person said that they had this health problem this whole time. And I completely disregarded that when I was vegan. So I did look in, I did try to look into it, um, from like a medical perspective, like lo looking at the vegan doctors and stuff, but it was mostly YouTubers that I was watching and getting a lot of my information from and documentaries, like what the health, um, and whatever other ones were out at the time. Yeah. There's been, a, there's been a number of those that have, that have come out over the years. Do you, um, so all this time, I mean, were you seeing a doctor at some point Were they encouraging a plant-based diet Were they saying, Hey, maybe you need to eat some more meat in your diet. When did, did that ever come up with you with discussions with the physicians? Periodically, I would go to the doctor and they, I remember I had blood test on, on a few occasions and they, they never pointed anything out, um, in that sense. But when I did get the ulcerative colitis diagnosis, um, I remember my doctor, I, my doctor knew I was vegan and he said actually that meat and dairy, especially red meat can aggravate colitis. So he actually really enforced for me and he was not a vegan doctor. He was just a regular doctor. But when he said that it really dug 
the nail in deeper for me and made me really believe that I was doing the right thing. So it was honestly more, my doctor's advice was more confusing to me than helpful. I know I've heard other people say that their doctors actually did encourage them to stop being vegan, but the only time that ever did happen was really early on into veganism for me, maybe about a year. Um, I remember I was still seeing the same doctors I was seeing when I was, um, like eating disorder doctors basically. And I did tell like one of them was fine with it. And then the other one I remember was like, you only eat plants. And I said, yeah. And she was very judgmental about it, but she didn't give me any like concrete advice. She just like acted very condescending about the way I was eating. Yeah. I don't think that's helpful either. You know, when, when the doctor says, Hey, you know, eating red meat is and dairy is leading to diverticulitis and you had to think to yourself, well, I'm not eating any of that at all. I can't yeah. cut that out. So it's kind of what else could be causing this. Interesting. Um, how much, you know, a lot of people when they become vegan, it becomes part of their kind of identity and they kind of only hang out with vegans. And only, did you get into that sort of, sort of mentality or what was, what was a kind of it like, you know, were you really bought into the community? So I bought into the community community online. Um, I never, I'm happy about this now, but I never developed a huge platform around veganism because that would have been very hard to step away from. But I did have a few people in my life who were vegan. I was never the type of person that um, would criticize people for eating meat around me. My significant other has always been a meat eater and I never cared. So I never had like that platform, um, where I experienced like a ton of judgment from others, um, from not being vegan anymore. But on the other hand, everybody in my life knew I was vegan. I was vegan for so long that if, you know, people in my life knew me for any amount of time, they knew me as like the very strict vegan. And so it was hard in that sense because it was kind of like admitting to everybody that I was wrong, but because including animal products in my diet again, healed my colitis. That was kind of the angle that I took with everyone because it was just the truth that it healed my colitis. And I feel like that made people more compassionate about it. The mo the most hate that I've received is on my account now because I've, I encounter a lot of very angry vegans. Yeah. Did you, I mean, and speaking of that, did you notice a change in sort of mental outlook or mental, fun mental function or cognition or mood? Uh, when you started to reincorporate animal products? Yeah. yeah. So I would say as a vegan, my self-esteem was at its lowest. And I would have thought that was just circumstantial. But since I reincorporated, reincorporated animal products in my diet, and especially since I've cut out, um, like I would say 90% of carbs from my diet, the mental clarity I have um, is unparalleled to the way that it was that I was as a vegan. Um, I have energy that doesn't dip anymore. Um, whereas as a vegan, I would eat in the, like I would have my breakfast in the morning and I would want to go to sleep after. Um, and then my mental health too has improved without me having to do anything special. Like on a daily basis, my well being is just a lot better. The things that used to bother me that would get under my skin don't anymore. And again, the only thing that I've changed, I'm not going to like a psychologist or taking psych meds or anything. I'm, I don't take any medications. So the only thing that I've changed is my diet. So clearly it's influencing my mental health in a very positive way. Yeah. I think I saw a video where you'd mentioned something about, you know, like reflexes and, and, you know, your processing speed, you know, your ability to, to, to put sentences together has, has improved significantly. Is that was that your experience? Yes. Oh, totally. What towards the end of veganism, I remember I would be talking to people or um, I used to make YouTube videos on a whole other account. And I would be trying to just say some, like a thought that I was having and I would just lose track in the middle of the sentence or just not be able to think of the right word to say. And I thought that was just me like not being articulate enough. And again, the contrast that I can see now with the way that I function mentally and with my reflexes, it, it makes me, uh, it makes me sure that it is totally because of my diet and because of the nutrients that I'm getting that I was experiencing that brain fog before and why I have like such mental clarity now and so much faster reflexes. 
Yeah, there's a there's a lot of stereotypical stuff going out there about you know the vegans tend to to, to be very thin. They tend to be anemic. They have a hard time putting on muscle. Um, was that your experience at all, or can you tell the difference now with those types of things with 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 animal products in your diet now? Yeah, I can definitely tell. I work out on a daily basis and I'm actually less fanatic about it now than I was when I was vegan. I maybe work out five days a week now and the changes in my physique are much more noticeable. The changes in my body composition are much more noticeable. Like I look a lot more fit now while doing less. And by, by doing less, I'm not saying that I have no workout routine. I do. I have a consistent workout routine, but I used to work out for like two hours a day as a vegan and my body composition never really changed. I was around the same weight, but I, I was like, I looked more like skinny fat and, and again, um, these almost like effortless changes in my body composition, since I reintroduced animal products, make me sure that the, um, the difficulty I was having as a vegan was because of my diet and because of the nutrients I was lacking. Did you make a special effort to eat a lot of protein on a vegan diet? I mean, there's a lot of people. So you just, you know, if you just maybe add some protein powders, some soy isolates, some pea protein, uh, eat a lot of legumes and things like that. Was that, was that part of your calculus when you're planning your diet? I did. I, I did pay special attention to protein because that was what kept me like somewhat full. Again, I always had cravings, but it kept me more full than eating like just vegetables and carbs. So I did, I had protein powders at times. I ate a lot of meat substitutes, which is really gross to me now, but I feel like those were the only things that were really like satisfying me on any level. So I would eat a lot of meat substitutes. I would eat a lot of beans. I would eat, um, pro I would have protein shakes. Um, and I would eat, uh, what else? I said beans. I would base, I did focus on protein when I was uh, vegan, but it just wasn't, uh, it obviously wasn't adequate. Yeah. One of the things with, you know, we always kind of sit there and wonder, you know, because, you know, as, as a vegan, you profess to not want to eat meat. And, and yet many of them are just eating these foam meats because I guess they still like the, the texture and the flavor and the approximate the, the, the desire for that. Is that something you you said you got a little bit of satisfaction from that. Is that the reason that you continue to eat them? Yes. So I would have denied at the time that I was having meat and dairy cravings, but now I can easily look back on that and see I was craving those things because I wanted the real thing. If I, if, if humans could actually eat a diet where they could subsist on, you know, not eating meat and dairy products, then you wouldn't crave them so much as a vegan. You wouldn't want to eat meat substitutes and, if you look at almost any what I eat in a day video on YouTube of a vegan, they're almost always eating meat substitutes. And if they're not they're and they're eating um, like a whole foods plant based diet, they they seem to have even more problems than the ones that are eating the processed meat substitutes. Yeah, interesting. Did you notice uh, you mentioned that uh, you want you try to low fiber vegan diet? How does that what, 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 what did that consist of? I'm just kind of curious how you make that work. It was a lot of processed foods. I remember m my doctor, I like ironically, because it's such bad advice. He told me to eat refined flour to focus on refined, uh, refined carbs and low fiber fruits and veggies like bananas. Um, and I can't remember what other advice he gave me, but it was like the, the main advice was to focus on eating refined foods, which is it's so gross to think about now. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned early on, you know, you had an eating disorder. I think you said, you said anorexia when you were younger and interestingly, and I've talked to people who've gone in recovery and their advice for that is the same thing. Eat a bunch of ultra processed, high calorie foods, you know, to kind of, kind of recover from that. Why do you, I mean, you know, and some people will say that veganism is just another eating disorder. You know, it's kind of one of those, it allows you to mask that sort of thing. Um, how did you, I mean, let's go before you became vegan, you were, you were, you were dealing with an eating disorder. How did, how did that come about? So I was chubby as a kid. And because of that, I think I, I, I know I developed body image issues because of comments people made. And by around the time I was 11, I would say I had lost a lot of baby weight just because I always have been a pretty active person. 
So I was in no way even fat, but I decided at 11 that I wanted to lose 20 pounds. And I've always been very like stubborn and hard headed. So when I decided that I was going to do it no matter what. And so I remember my parents even telling me like, you don't need to lose weight. Like this is not a smart idea, but I did it anyway. And I remember I was just, I, the, you know, the, um, the protocols that I followed to do that were just bad advice that I found online, like to reduce calories. And when I, I remember even as an 11 year old, when I learned that it was like finding the magic key of how to lose weight. Um, and I figured, oh, if I just eat like 300 calories a day, that means that I'll lose like X amount of weight in this amount of time. And obviously that's really, really bad. And obviously that's, it's not that simple, but when I did start seeing that weight loss, it became almost an addictive thing. And I reduced calories more and more and more for that six month period. And, um, yeah, I did, I got very underweight. Um, and that was another instance in my life where if I didn't wake up and stop, I would have definitely died eventually. Um, but that was before I was even vegan. I remember, uh, even when I did have an eating disorder, I was eating like yogurt, I was eating chicken. I just was eating like nowhere near the amount that I needed to sustain myself. Do you notice, uh, did you notice, uh, like you said, you mentioned about 10 years in, you started to develop this, uh, colitis type thing, eventually diagnosed as ul- ulcerative colitis. Did you know that notice anything prior to that with regard to your health? I mean, was there, were there some warning signs that came in earlier that would have said in retrospect, you, you could have said, Hey, this, my health is starting to deteriorate. There were some red flags. I mean, throughout the entirety of veganism for me, I had brain fog. I, um, I remember I was always trying to find supplements that would help me focus. So I was always like on the lookout for new supplements that like helped with focus. And I never found one. Um, I had minor digestive issues throughout that time. Um, like I would get minor digestive pain a lot after eating, but nothing on the level of ulcerative colitis and what else. And my self-esteem was just so low. Like I remember feeling, I never like, I never thought of myself as depressed, but compared to now looking back on that time, I felt very low for, I would say a good majority of that time as a vegan. You mentioned that, um, you know, you had these recurrent flare-ups with colitis. Were there any things on the vegan diet that like were worse for you? Like were high fiber foods or beans with lectins and things like that? Did you notice what would seem to trigger you the most? Well, an ingredient I do think could have been what initially caused the colitis is a carrageenan. It is a thickener that's found in a lot of vegan foods, but it's not only in vegan foods. It's in like cold cuts and like just normal foods as well. What was that? Dairy product. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it seems to be up in a lot of dairy products and heavy creams and ice creams and things like that. So you have to kind of go out of your way to, to look for that on the label. So um, interesting. Yes. Yeah, that's that's an interesting thing. Did anyone along this 14 year journey sort of, um, you know, did you ever get in, in a discussion where somebody said, hey, veganism may not be right for these reasons or disputing some of the uh, the information that's out there. Did, did that ever, did, did, or did you ever pay attention to that? Did it ever make you think, or did you just kind of, I'm not going to think about this stuff. When I w- was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, I remember I had to take an extended leave from my job at the time because I was so sick. And I was told by one of my coworkers and a friend at the time that everybody at my job was saying that I got colitis because of my diet, because I was vegan. I had family members to reach out to me and say, Hey, um, um, just, you know, veganism can cause colitis. And, um, one family member specifically, I remember, um, said, you know, I've, cause she works in the healthcare industry. And she said, I've seen people not reverse this, but, uh, help it by having bone broth and stuff. You really should at least have bone broth. And I, decided that I was going to research how to, um, how to heal colitis as a vegan instead and found all these people that were just, um, giving me confirmation bias. And I, uh, I essentially, even though I had these people trying to warn me, I, I was just in denial and I really, 
I tried to trick myself into believing that I, I could heal colitis as a vegan. So I, I didn't listen to them. Um, and you know, they were all well-meaning. Some of them were more nasty than others, but yeah, I just, I was so stubborn and in denial that I just ignored it. Yeah. I mean, going back to, you know, when you're 13, you know, obviously that you, you in retrospect, you're like, wow, there's a lot of things I didn't know when I was 13 that I wish I would have known back then, but you, you just can't, I mean, that's just part of life. And, you know, you're being exposed to slaughterhouse videos and, you know, and, and in many cases, very, uh, emotionally charged, uh, you know, intentionally, um, intentionally. So videos and, and, and documentaries that, that some of the vegan uh, folks like to make, and there's a lot of, unfortunately, there's a lot of half truths or context that's left out and things like that. You know, for instance, you know, you're like, well, cows or pigs or sheep or whatever, they go to slaughter, they die before we eat them. But there's a lot of death that occurs in any food production system. In fact, there are literally trillions of animals every year. Did that ever, like, did, did you ever think when you're eating a, a salad that, hey, there's a lot of mice that got killed to make this salad? Was that ever something that you ever even thought about? It wasn't. And I don't know how I ignored it for all that time. I think I just never allowed myself to think that deeply about it because now that makes so much sense to me. Um, it's it's just a fact. Like if you think about a uh, fields being uh, being plowed or, or crops being harvested, obviously there's going to be wildlife that are in the field that are going to get run over and like chopped up. And, and I just never thought about it. And that's been another whole eye-opening thing for me since I did stop being vegan is learning about the truth about agriculture and about how many animals you're actually saving, which isn't it's really not that different from the amount of animals that are slaughtered. Yeah. And I think, you know, even more so, cause a lot of people say, well, they'll run away from the, from the, from the grain threshers and whatnot. And some of them do, many of them probably do. Some of them don't, some of them get caught up, but probably more importantly, you know, you look at how these crops are, these fields are prepared and it's massive spraying of pesticides and herbicides and tilling the land. And, you know, the pesticides are not unintentional. I mean, people say, well, it was all unintentional when, when I'll say, well, a pesticide is the very purpose of a pesticide is to kill things. And that's done with yes. great intent. And so uh, that to me is the biggest, you know, probably the biggest location where you see most of the death coming in is, you know, preparing the lands and cr and destroying the uh, ecosystems for many of these animals. And, you know, a lot of them that, that end up dead, I mean, they're, you know, they're poisoned, uh, you know, and there's, they just lay in the field and rot, you know, at least the ones that, that die for our consumption you know, at least their, their, their sort of body and their sacrifice goes to nourish the rest of the other, other creatures. Like all of us, all animals become food. Eventually we'll all be food for something, whether it's a microbe or an earthworm or whatever, we're all going to end up there at some, yeah. some point. Um, you know, now people will say clearly you were never a vegan. I mean, that's the definition, right? You were never really a vegan. If you somehow got sick and you know, <laughs> and decided that I was going to do something from house. So you could not have been a vegan. What do you say to people that say that you were never actually a vegan? First of all, I just like to mess with people like that. So I'll just say you're wrong. Um, and I was vegan, but when people do approach me saying things like that, I will bring up the fact that what I always go back to is that as a vegan, I had an autoimmune disorder that no matter what I did, it would not heal. It continually came back. And within a month of me reintroducing animal products, it went into remission permanently. So there was something there. There was something that was not there when, as a vegan that could not heal my body that is there now. So obviously I can only logically determine from that, that animal products are a necessary ingredient in my diet. And then I bring up the, the crop deaths too, which I know vegan will like just um they'll criticize you for using that argument but it's true like there are just as many there's just as much wildlife that are killed for a vegan diet as there are for a an animal based diet so those are the two things i always go back to when i hear that yeah one of the arguments that counters is i'll say well more crops are fed to animals which is actually not not even true i mean at, at worst case scenario the fao estimates about a third of Cereal crops are fed to animals, but then, you know, you think about all the crops that humans eat, it's not just cereals. We eat a lot more than that. You know, 
animals aren't eating much rice. They're not eating much watermelon. I mean, they may get some of the scraps that we can't utilize, but uh, humans clearly eat the most crops on the planet. I mean, that's, and, and some of it goes to biofuels and some of these other things, but um, that, that's one of the counter arguments they have. They, they, they tend not to realize, you know, they'll often quote that 80% of agricultural land is, goes to grazing animals. Well, because 80% of the land can only support grazing animals, you can't grow crops on those land, those same lands. And so it's an, it's an interesting sort of dynamic and they just kind of just kind of ignore some of those facts. Would you consider going back to veganism? Let's say your health, your colitis goes away. Was there, was there anything that would sort of steer you back to going to a vegan diet at this point? No, absolutely not. I, uh, the benefits that I've seen, especially since I've started, like, I guess what would be considered like a hyper carnivore diet or like a basically carnivore diet. I really don't eat any plant foods anymore. The benefits that I've seen since I started eating this way are something I could not give up. I might alter things, you know, based on if I ever develop a deficiency, but I would never, ever consider going back to veganism. I remember somebody recently um, reached out to me and they were like, they said something about like, you shouldn't criticize vegans. Like you're just a lapsed vegan as if I'm going to go back to veganism when I get healthy enough again. And I was like, no, we are not the same. I'm not going to do that. Sorry. Yeah. And just speaking of lapsed vegans, I mean, in your years of the 14 years you do it and you probably met other vegans and did, did you see a lot of them kind of on and off the wagon? We, you know, there's a so-called Cheegan where they're, you know, every, you know, a couple times a week, they're having a piece of fish or a few eggs here and there. And just to kind of, was that something you saw fairly commonly? I feel like I, I knew so little vegans in my personal life that I never had the opportunity. I do. I have one good friend who is vegan and she's asked me multiple times throughout my time as a vegan, like, you know, do you ever cheat? And I honestly didn't really. I remember like having half and half once, like a few years into veganism, but that was really it. So I feel like she might cheat a little bit, but I've never seen her cheat. But I do know that that's a pretty common occurrence for a lot of vegans is that they, um, they'll say that they're vegan, but then they eat some like small amount of animal foods and they justify it because like, you know, overall they're vegan and overall their message is veganism. Yeah. I saw something the other day and I can't remember what they call themselves now, but it was somebody that they, they were vegan, except they would eat like uh shellfish or something like that. And it, that was, that was acceptable. And, you know, for me, I'm like, gosh, if you're worried about sentience, a shellfish is probably a pretty good place to start. They're not, they're not the, you know, there's not shellfish out there designing, writing poetry and stuff like that. They're pretty, you know, they, yeah. I know they do much more than a lot of plants do. So it's kind of interesting. Um, do you, uh, you know, well, let, let's talk about your diet today. So, so what, how did you sort of, I mean, cause a lot of people say you went from one extreme to the other, you went from vegan to karma. Why not just go just eat, eat an omnivorous diet and go with that. What was it? What was it? What was the thought for, for going sort of all the way the other way now? Because this way of eating gives me mental clarity like, like I've never had before and energy like I've never had before. And if I, I don't know if it's, I think a part of it is because my gut is healing still. But if I reintroduce anything, like even if I have a condiment or if I even have a piece of fruit, it gives me digestive pain right now. I don't know if that's going to change eventually, but that's essentially why, because carnivore keeps my uh, ulcerative colitis in remission. Um, it keeps all of those symptoms besides like the one thing I do still deal with on a daily basis is occasional diarrhea, but even that's getting better. So again, it keeps my ulcerative colitis in remission. It gives me mental clarity like I've never had before in my life. And it gives me energy. Yeah. And you heard the advice to avoid red meat and things like that. When you got the ulcerative colitis diagnosis from the physicians, it sounds like or the, or the, the thought was diverticulitis. And now I assume you're eating red meat again. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I eat, if I don't eat red meat in a day, I feel like I didn't, like I I'm missing something. So yeah, I eat it pretty often. Yeah, I, I get the same feeling. I know how you feel with that. Have you, since the ulcerative colitis has resolved or, you know, gone into remission or whatever terminology you want to use, have you been back to see like the gastroenterologist or whoever was managing this condition and have they had any comments about that? I haven't yet. It is something that I'm very interested to see. Um, I'm in between health insurance right now, actually. So that's really the only reason, but I am very interested to see, and that will be something that I share when I do have the information. 
Was that diagnosed through through uh, through uh, endoscopy? Do they do like a colonoscopy when they di- diagnose ulcer colitis, or how do they diagnose it? They had a they did a partial colonoscopy when I was in the hospital the second time, and they were going. They wanted to do a full on colonoscopy months later once my colon had healed enough, but it never really got to that point um, because again I. I think I mentioned this earlier, but I took prednisone for about a month and then I was, they, they wanted me to take mesalamine and I was never comfortable doing that. So after that friction happened, everything I was supposed to do with the doctor kind of fell through and I stopped seeing them, uh, frequently enough to even like schedule the colonoscopy. So I, they did a partial one and that was how I was diagnosed. Okay. Okay. So maybe you have a follow-up and I've seen a number of people now with diverticulitis, ulcer colitis, Crohn's disease have gone on a carnivore based elimination type diet. And six months, a year later, the, 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 the colonoscopy shows nothing. It's gone. So it's kind of interesting to see that, to get that objective uh, evidence. So uh, you mentioned, you know, your, your Instagram handle X plant eater, that's pretty um, in your face for a lot of people. What made you decide? Cause you said you really weren't on social media talking about diet. What, um, what caused you to say, Hey, I'm going to get out there and be more vocal about this. So when I went back to eating meat again, I was honest about it with most, most of the people in my life. And when I started to see these profound changes happening in my health, I, I just wanted to share it with people. Sorry. I don't know what my camera is doing. Um, I wanted to share it with people and I found the audience in my personal life while they weren't really rude about it. I feel like a lot of people were, they were just so confused because I was like such a strict vegan for such a long time. And so it wasn't the, the content, like on say my personal Instagram, that people wanted to see. I would, I remember I did make one video about why I stopped stop being vegan and nobody really in, uh, engaged with it. Nobody really. So I, so I decided I, I kind of do want to make a new platform to talk about these things. I could see other people who share their ex vegan story, how much it helped people. It helped me when I was finding those videos, when I was considering not being vegan anymore. So that was what made me want to share my story. And then I came up with the ex plant eater almost as a joke. I like ran it by my fiance and we were, I, he, he was actually the one I ran a few names by him and he was the one that was like, I like that one. I think it's like the, the most like in your face or it's like catchy. So I started that account thinking I didn't think much of it. And then from the first post, I had so much support. I, I get some really nasty comments too and stuff from vegans, but the support outweighs the criticism infinitely. So that was why, um, because I didn't have a, a, I didn't have a receptive audience in my personal life and I don't really blame them. That's not why they're there, but I did want to share it somehow. So that was why I, I made this account in this YouTube channel. Yeah. Your fiance, was he with you when you were vegan? And then if so, did he notice a change in you? Is he happier with maybe the dietary change? Is it dependent? Is he, I'm sure he probably likes eating meat anyway, probably. Yeah, we would, he was never vegan, but we would eat a lot of the same foods. So he was, I think when I was vegan, experiencing the same problems that vegans experience, like with especially insulin resistance. So we both started watching the ex vegan videos at the same time. We found other carnivore, uh, YouTube channels not long after. And at first it was kind of crazy to both of us, but the more we watched those videos, the more it made sense, especially finding videos like yours and Ken Berry's were like, okay, these are like doctors now that are saying this is a good thing. So that was what gave us the confidence to start eating this way. And he, yeah. So he's noticed a huge change in me. He, he said from, for the last few months that I seem more confident, I'm more energetic. I literally like talk faster and I seem happier and I've seen changes in him too. Like his body composition also changed. Cause he's, he's eating like the same diet as me now. His body composition also changed. He's like happy on a daily basis. His skin improved. Um, so we've both seen amazing changes from eating this way. 
Yeah, that's, uh, you know, like I said, that's something I see, again, literally every day. And literally, I do consultations. And almost every week, I get three or four ex vegans that, you know, just some of them have been doing it for 30 or 40 years. And they finally realize they hit that wall. And it's just something they have a hard time reconciling that the healthiest diet on the planet, as Michael Greger would say, uh, or Gregor would say, is not really that healthy or has problems with you. Did you supplement? Were you, I mean, were you on top of B12 and some of these other things that are often considered deficient on a vegan diet? So B12, I did supplement, um, I would say almost on a daily basis after I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. I remember they did have me taking D3. Um, they had me taking a few other supplements, I think magnesium, but that was for like a few months after I was diagnosed with, uh, with ulcerative colitis. Otherwise I did take DHA on and off. Um, but it was really just DHA and B12 that I remember taking on a daily basis. I, I would supplement things as I thought I needed them. So I remember I, I supplemented iron at one time, but it was never like besides B12 and DHA, I wasn't taking anything like every single day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of vegans would say that's, you don't really need much supplementation out of, out of, outside of vitamin B12. You know, there's a uh, paper written by, it's a policy paper written in 2016 by the American Association of Dietetics and Nutritionists or something. I can't remember the exact organization, but something like that. And they said that, you know, veganism is safe for children, infants, breastfeeding mothers, all ages and stages. Um, are you aware of that study? Were you aware of it? Been people talking about that study? I've seen, I, I think I did see you post something about it and I've seen other people post about it. When I did see that, I just like I just rolled my eyes because that's such dangerous advice. I used to think that veganism was safe for children. Like you could raise your kids on a vegan diet. And I believe that that's child abuse now. Um, seeing the way my own health degraded, like to do that to a child is, is abuse. Yeah. Well, I mean, just, just to point out with that, that study, they, all three of the authors were ethical vegans and like six of the nine peer reviewers, reviewers were all vegan. So it's, it's very kind of suspect the conflict of interest, you know, the ethical conflict of interest that's in there in that, in that study. And we've got a number of uh, nutritional governing bodies in other countries like Switzerland and Germany and Belgium and Italy that all say, no, 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 not good for you. Do you, would you recommend a vegan diet to anyone at this point? No, absolutely not. I, um, I'm not the type to be like in anybody's face about it, but you know, like, like my friend who's vegan, for example, I just don't talk to her about these things. If somebody's receptive to it, I will, I'll talk to them about it for as long as they want though. But I would never recommend veganism to anyone anymore. When you were, you know, obviously when you were vegan, you were surely were exposed to meat as bad for your health. It's, you know, it's got all these, you know, awful things. Uh, what do you think about when you hear those things now? I think it's a lot of propaganda. I try to be more um, articulate about the way that I talk to people about it when they say things like that, because I don't want to seem like I'm just like brainwashed now into believing meat is, is good for you. But I mean, seeing the way that my like a life threatening autoimmune disorder that I had has reversed itself and so many like every other health issue that I've had has completely turned around. I can only determine that this is my natural diet. So to, for somebody else to say to me, meat is bad for you. It's, it's like, it's almost laughable to me now. Yeah. With veganism, you, uh, there's, I mean, a lot of people say it's not a diet, you know, I mean, it, there is a vegan diet, but it's not a diet. It's a, it's a, it's a way of life. It's a, it's a philosophy. It's a moral obligation or, or, or whatever you want to say uh, with a diet, a meat-based diet, you know, at least in my, my opinion, it's not. I mean, if you want to eat blueberries and strawberries and whatever, and you do fine with that, there's no problem with that. Do you, um, uh, you know, as far as, you know, you've mentioned, I'm going to, if I need to supplement, I'll do that. I mean, do you feel like, Hey, if, if you feel like you need to, you don't feel like you're dogmatically and ideologically stuck on a carnivore diet at this point, do you? No, I eat this way because again, the health issues that it's giving me, um, and another thing too, with eating this way, especially when I eat red meat, um, which I eat red meat almost every day now, I never get cravings. I never feel like I am missing anything. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like I get palate fatigue, but 
overall, even if I find it boring, I can sit down and eat like ground beef and then not think about food again for hours after that. And that is completely, completely the opposite to the way I was when I was vegan. I would eat and think about food like the second that I stopped eating again. Yeah. I've heard that that commenter a lot is, you know, veganism is a lot of thinking about food, preparing food, eating food. It's like you're constantly enmeshed in always having food around you. Is, is Was that your experience? How much, how much time, how much, how many hours of the day of your working day or your waking day did you spend thinking about food, preparing food, eating food? How, how dominant was that on a vegan diet? I would probably spend most of the day thinking about food. I remember my favorite thing to watch on YouTube was um, people making vegan recipes. And I was always specifically, I remember I was always trying to find the ultimate recipe to um, that would uh, imitate meat or like imitate dairy. If a new, um, if a new faux uh, meat product came out or a new faux dairy product, I was so eager to try it because I was trying to see if it would replicate what I remembered meat and dairy tasting like better than the other products I was eating. So I was always thinking about food. I was always trying to find products that would replicate those things. Um, I did save time with cooking when I would just like warm up. Um, I, it's so gross to say now, but like morning star farms, like chicken nuggets and stuff or like other processed foods. If I was just warming that up in the microwave, that didn't take long to prepare. On the other hand, though, there would be recipes sometimes that I would make that would take hours. Um, I personally am glad I never did this, but I've seen videos of people making like a vegan egg and it takes hours for them to make just to um, make some canola oil concoction. Yeah, I I, I, believe me, I get people sending me these elaborate 50 step recipes to make an egg or make some kind of foam meat. And I just kind of I kind of laugh at how how complicated it is to do that. Did you find that, um, was it easy to be where, and I don't know where you're at, where, what part of the world are you in? I mean, you're in the U S I'm guessing, but yeah, I'm in New York on long Island. So, um, it's not as like crazy and fast paced as the city, but it, it's still New York, but fairly easy to be vegan in New York. I mean, I've got op- vegan restaurants and you know, it's, it's not hard to do it if you wanted to, correct? No, it was, If anything, it was the most difficult for me as a teenager when I wasn't shopping for food by myself. As the years went on and I started going food shopping for myself, um, it it was it was like effortless um, in that sense. But then again, the way that I eat now is just as effortless. Did um, because you mentioned you when you were a kid. So I mean, your parents obviously saw you go from anorexia to veganism now to carnivore. I assume. I mean, has there have they thought anything about any of these things? They're very supportive. I don't think they realize the depth though. I don't think they realize I don't eat like any vegetable oils or um, even any, any vegetables. They might not realize the depth of that. And I don't know if they'd necessarily be concerned. The thing was my dad grew up on a farm as a kid. So he thought veganism, if anything, was way worse for my health than the way that I eat now. So I don't think they're anywhere near as concerned as they were for me when I did have ulcerative colitis and when I did have an eating disorder. Yeah. Did, did, the, did the diet ever cause you any like, I don't know, personal uh, relationship issues or like, you know, you just work issues or anything? Was there anything that conflicts that, that arose from that, that from the diet? The only thing that I ever really remember being an issue was like family get togethers. I would, I, in the end, I would always end up bringing my own food because there would never be anything I could eat. Um, I remember too, an ex-boyfriend making a comment of like, we can never go out to eat anywhere, but I don't know, like a lot of restaurants are very accommodating to veganism. So it's kind of like a BS comment, but yeah, that did, that was like a, um, a moment of friction in our relationship, uh, because of veganism. And yet it was really just, um, just get togethers with family that, um, it got a little awkward and I would, in the end, I would make sure I would just bring my own food. Yeah. And what do you, I mean, just how long has it been since you've had your last ulcerative colitis flare? How long, how long has it been? Since last June, since even before I started the carnivore diet, my symptoms went into remission. 
um, I would say about a month after I started reincluding animal foods. Okay. So it's been over a year now. So that's, that's really good. That's really good to see. What do you, what do you think? I mean, if you just, I mean, there's no way to know this, but I mean, predicting, where do you think you'll go next with this? You just kind of continue on a carnivore diet and then, and then potentially try to reintroduce foods or what are your, what are your plans? For now, I am happy with the way that I'm eating. I feel like when I am comfortable enough, if, if I ever get to the point that fruit, for example, doesn't cause me issues again, I would like to include that. But really, I, I totally see myself eating this way, um, like a very highly animal-based diet for the rest of my life. Um, you'd have to be living under a rock not to notice this, but there is an increasing push. Much of it's coming from, from corporations, quite honestly, to convince people to eat less meat, eat more like the faux meats and the, and the plant-based diets that are out there, which I think is a lot of it is just a push to get more people on processed foods. But um, probably when you were vegan, you're probably supportive of that message. And now that you're not, how does that message make you feel? Somebody actually sent me a tweet from beyond meat, I think today, and they were, and it was essentially something along the lines of uh, how meat is destroying the environment. I think that's so ignorant. And I think there's totally an agenda behind that because from the way that I saw my own cognition um, uh, improve since I stopped being vegan, I, I feel like it's without sounding like a conspiracy theorist, like it's totally like a part of it is getting people to be less, uh, less like assertive and less, um, like mentally there. I, I think it's scary. Um, and it's, it's, it's scary that that message is becoming so prevalent and, and more widely accepted. And this is a controversial question and topic and, and feel free to skip if you don't want to talk about this, but um, a lot of people, when they switch the diet preference, when they go to more meat, they have a lot of different philosophical changes across the board. Is that something you've noticed? Have you noticed any sort of, like some people will wake up to nutrition and they'll say, well, maybe these other things are kind of, you know, maybe not what I thought they were as well. I've had, yeah. So especially last I would say like the last election cycle, um, I realized that I had a lot of uh, contrasting beliefs with a lot of vegans. And that was actually what started to wake me up. Um, and people like Bill Gates, like the things he's been pushing as of recently, that also started to wake me up because I disagree with them so heavily. So, um, yeah, without getting too uh, in detail about it, I've had that same uh, that same awakening on other topics as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's <laughs> a lot of people seem to notice that. Um, well, we are running out of time. I've got to go prepare for some consultations here in a few minutes. And so I want to thank you very much uh, for, for being willing to, to, to not only, well, I mean, good for you for doing what's right for your health. I think it's, it's incredibly important. I think sick people don't benefit society. Uh, you know, particularly when you make them better. It's not, not that sick people are bad, but, you know, when we're talking about sustainability, you know, a lot of people want to talk about sustainability. Now, his sick people does not equal a sustainable planet, in my view. Um, where do people go to find out more about you? I know you, we mentioned explant. Maybe you can just kind of reiterate where to go go to. Yeah. So I'm the, I'm called the Explant Eater on Instagram and on YouTube. I'm um, the same name on both. I do have a Twitter and a TikTok as well, but I don't really use them. So Instagram is where I, I, I update it the most and I'm the most uh, active on there. Okay. So the X plant, the X plant eater. Yeah. Yeah. The X plant leader. Okay. Well, Josie, it's been a pleasure. Good luck to you. And, uh, uh, you know, what I would like, you know, if, if you do decide to go get, get followed up with your doctor and maybe they do some more testing to confirm the ulcer colitis is gone, I'd love to hear how that turns out. So that might be an interesting uh, yeah, of course. That comes up. So anyway, well, thank you very much. And for the rest of you folks, thank you guys. We'll be back tomorrow as usual and take care. Have a great, great oh. morning. Rest of your day. You're an afternoon in New York. So have a great afternoon. Thank you again. You All too. Right. Okay. Bye everybody. Take care. Thanks. All right. Bye.